Hello everyone. So let's let's start with a demonstration of the crime attack. In this attack, we see that there is a victim machine. So let's start the victim machine. So the victim machine has a secret text, which in this case is a session token that he or she is trying to protect. And this is a text that the attacker is trying to figure out. So um, the victim has compression feature turned on, which the attacker takes advantage of. The attacker has the ability to arbitrarily add data to the HTTP request and send it from the victim's machine as well as sniff the send traffic. Even though the attacker will not be able to read the send request since it is encrypted, he or she will still be able to observe the length of the request. The attacker can methodically add different values to the request before sending them and can observe the length of the request. Since there is compression involved, in case there is a match in the added value and the session token, the final length will be shorter than the previous ones. This will enable the attacker to figure out one character and then iteratively figure out the other characters as well. This is the key logic behind this attack. So let's start with the attacker's code. Here you can see that the victim machine is getting multiple requests and it is sending multiple requests and the attacker is slowly trying to figure out the possible values of the secret text. So the code has finished running and there are three possible values which are uh, deduced by the code. So the attacker can manually use uh, these three to figure out which is the correct one. So in this case, you see that the second one is the correct cookie value. So this is a simple demonstration of the crime attack. So let's move on to the demonstration of poodle attack. In this attack, the victim and the server are communicating using SLV3, which uses AES CBC mode of encryption. It is very important to understand how SLV3 works in order to exploit its features to successfully execute the poodle attack. So you have the plain text which is being sent to the server. An HMAC is added to the plain text. So HMAC is nothing but hashed message authentication code. It is a 32 byte string which is used to ensure the integrity of the text. And then you have padding. So SLV3 uses AES encryption which is a block cipher. So the plain text is divided into blocks of 16 bytes each and then encrypted. In case the last block is not completely filled, there is a padding which is added at the end to fill up the last block. The last byte of the last block contains the length of the padded bytes. In case the last block is completely filled without the need of padded bytes, another block is added at the end which just contains the padded bytes. This is what the attacker takes advantage of. So the attacker knows the length of the edge map since it's a fixed value. If the, so, the attacker can modify the length of the text such that the last block will be completely filled with padded bytes. So after this, the entire text is encrypted and is sent to the server. So, um, so what the attacker will do is he will take the block of the text which he wants to be decrypted and replace the last block which just contains the padded bytes with this block and send it to the server. So the server then decodes, decrypts the uh, encrypted text and it, if the last byte of the last block is not equal to the block length, since the last block is completely filled with padded bytes, then the server will discard this and throw an error. So if the server accepts it, then it is very easy to figure out the last byte. If the server does not accept it, then uh, the attacker just changes the key and tries it again until there is a match. So there is a 1 in 256 chance that there is a match. So using this technique, the attacker can slowly figure out the plain text. Uh, let's move on to the demonstration of the poodle attack. So let's start the server. Okay, let's start the attacker. And the victim. So uh, all three are started. Now we, what we need to do is we need to uh, start the attack. So what we do is we use uh, we use localhost to start the attack. So here you can see that this is the text which is which is to be decrypted. Which is, this is the secret text which is sent from the victim to the server. So here slowly the attacker is figuring out 
byte by byte what is the secret text so this is block 2 and these are the number of tries which it took for a match so um, yeah as you can see this is happening so the attacker gets this message this is the encrypted text so the attacker cannot understand what this encrypted text is but it can identify the length and the length of the encrypted text is equal to the length of the plain text so this is a very important property so the second block has been successfully decrypted we'll move on to the first block And you can see this is this is how the attacker controls the length of the um, text. So we can modify this value to control the length and figure out the last byte. Almost over. Yes, three more bytes left. So here, here you can see that there is a <clears throat> change in the length. Okay, so the the attacker uses this change to figure out the length of the block. Yeah, so the attack has been successfully executed. So you can see the plain text demo of the portal attack. Sorry, uh, this yeah. So as you can see, this is the message initial secret message which is sent from the victim device to the server. The attacker has successfully decrypted it. So this showcases the portal attack. Thank you.